Rick Mast on the pole, Mark Martin. The Burton brothers, the highest push series regulars in this field, right behind them, Robert Presley and Joe Nemechek. Jim Bound with a good qualifying run. The Bound brothers, in fact, go four. Here we go. Green flag in the above. Waltrip started tail end of the field. It's a drag race to turn one, and nobody's won it. Side by side, Ward Burton squirts right up there to battle with the two leaders. Yeah, Mark Martin moved up hard into turn three, though. Here he comes. Mark's trying it on the outside early. That's pretty good. So you, I was talking about they want to get some heat in these tires, but Mark's pretty confident with that car of his. First time Rick Mass has led the opening lap of a Bush race since June 1987. You know what's crazy to tell you how tough this series is. He went to Daytona with that car and didn't even make the race. Right. And he's on the pole here. Yeah, it's a pretty good idea how tough this series is. In fact, for the last two weeks, the pole sitting car did not make Daytona. Mark Martin's car didn't qualify. He had to rent one from Dale Jarrett for Daytona. As you look at Rick Mass and the lead he enjoys down into turn one. He has bought car length over Ward Burton. The four to Mark Martin. The Win Dixie car has slipped to third. Last year, this year, we saw Ward Burton has some good runs. He, he really needs to get his car going here. He's going to run up front. And he's all over Rick Mass right now. Leaders cross the stripe to complete lap three. Jeff Burton comes up to the fourth spot behind Mark Martin. Robert Presley is fifth. Joni Nicek is sixth. Jim Bound is seventh. Jeremy Sadler is eighth from Mark Martin's car. You see how close they come to that pit wall at turn four. Start finish line. There's the middle of the straightaway. And down into turn one. Now this is a few Mark Martin didn't have much of it. Rockingham, somebody in front of him. <laughs> he pretty well ran away with the race. He's going to have to work to get around these guys here. Back down into turn number three. As you ride with a third place car, here they come off the corner. Let's check with Glenn Jarrett. You see, you see the uh, early charge that Ward Burton's making. He's racing hard up there in second, third position, just passed by uh, Mark Martin. But Ward is the only car in the field with Hoosier tires on. Now, Hoosier tires have had a little problem in the past, in the first two races of this year, but they feel like the short track tire is as good as any. It'll be interesting to see if that tire stays under him all day. He could be a factor in this race. Ward Burton just slid back from fourth to sixth. There are your two leaders. Or he was third. There he is back now in sixth place. Jeff Burton's that white Ford, the baby Ruth car, in third. Mark Martin is fourth, and that's Joe Nemechek in fifth. Here's Burton continuing to fall back. He is, I believe, the only car in the field on the Hoosier tires. Though that may not be a factor here. Hermie Sadler just got past him, and a lot of smoke from Tracy Leslie's car as he comes down the front straightaway and drops to the inside. You know, last week at Rockingham, we saw the ability on the racetrack to be able to move two and three lanes wide. There, there's a 72 car on the inside. He did have a motor problem in front straightaway. He's off the face right now. See the smoke really boiling out of his car. Boy, he's not coming in. He's, you know, I guarantee the, you know, the black flag is out for him. They've got his number up on the board. Well, he'll have three laps to obey that flag, but I don't know if that car will go three laps. Like that, we'll see. He is hoping to catch a caution flag and not be one. There's Todd Bodine going past. There's Harry Gant. And that Skull car, 71, that's not Gant. Now, don't get confused. That's Curtis Markham, who runs the Skull colors on the Bush NASCAR North Tour. Gant's car carries number seven, the Whitaker car, and it's yellow and red French's mustard. We see Mark Martin got around Rick Mast, and when he did, he opened the door. Look, three wide going down the back straightaway. That's not going to work. He, he got in line, though. Tracy Leslie is pitted. Now, Robert Presley thought about that for a minute. Listen, there's Darrell. There's that Curtis Markham car, 71. Sure looks like Harry Gant's Sunday ride. And Butch Miller in 75 getting up and underneath. We As saw Walter just a while ago, Mike. What happened to him is normally he could have went back to his regular starting position, but that last lap he stopped. He didn't have time to get back. So he's coming from the rear. Ian Gant trying to move up through. Ward Burton continues to backpedal. He's now out of the top 15, but staying on the racetrack. Rick Mass, there you see his advantage. Or rather, Mark Martin up there now. Mark Martin on the point. Robert Presley in second. Jeff Burton in third. Nemechek fourth. Mast back to fifth. And Hermie Sadler closing in. Young driver from Emporia. Having quite a day and really going here. Here's Burton. Drifting back a bit. Let's check with Glenn. 
Well, Mike, his problem started just as we were talking about him. I must have jinxed him, but uh, we picked up the radio transmission. They think that he's lost the cylinder. They really don't want it is, but there's a miss in the car, so I'm sure they're going to have to come in and take a look at it very shortly. Tough break. Had this kind of trouble in front of your, in your sponsor's race, but tough day for the Hardy's team. There's Mark Martin's lead. Robert Presley looks like he's closing it in a bit. Yeah, Robert said it in the last couple of races. He said he's going to approach his championship a little bit differently. He won races last year. They wanted to win races plus the championship. But he says he's been a little bit conservative, but his kind of conservatism is at the front of the back. So, yeah. Robert, when he gets a sniff of that lead up there, he's going to try to take the lead away from Mark Martin. If he can catch Mark, that's been a hard task to do in bush racing. Hard for anybody and impossible for anybody last week. Harry Gant started 29th today. He's up to 20th position. Game nine spots in There's Tony Macek with Jeff Burton. Yeah, the last lap coming off turn two. Burton almost got in the wall in the white eight car. The red 87 got up under him off the corner. The eight was almost in the wall. Tony Macek moves up to third in the Dentine car. Then Burton and Rick Mass, the pole sitter there, right with them. There we see Rick Mass behind the other two cars we were talking about. Mass said they were trying something different. We heard at the top of the show, try something a little bit different. He's behind these two cars here, and evidently it's not doing just what he wants to do. They'll have to crank on that car a little bit when they get a pit stop. Third, fourth, and fifth here, and they have uh, a good margin. About a second back in sixth place. Five, and you might see right side of the screen a bit of Hermie Sadler who's been trying to move up, running all by himself in the sixth spot. Back up front, Mark Martin and Robert Preston closing it down. Watching him, Preston said he tried to run him down and he couldn't get to him. Looks like he's gaining on Mark at this track. Looks like he might have something for Mark Martin. In sixth place, riding with Hermie Sadler, the youngster out of Emporia, Virginia. Right there, coming up off two, where we were just located on the track. That's the tough part. Nice entry down in turn three here. Watch the wall come up on the left right there. That's the end of that wall. And look at this front straightaway, how wide it is. Big wide entry, you stay out. But here's where the tightness. You get down in this corner, you see all this extra racetrack. But watch how the car coming off of this corner jumps right out the wall and almost knocks the wall down. That's the tightest place on the racetrack. That's where everybody gets into trouble if they have a problem. Now you say almost walk, knocks the wall down. You've done it. Yeah, but you're supposed to almost. I just didn't make the curve a time or two. <laughs> Probably the hardest hit I'd ever seen until Todd Bodine had one last weekend. Good battle here. Ricky Craven in 99 gives up a spot to Harry Gant in the mustard car. Then there's that dial page machine for Chuck Bound. And just ahead is Roy Payne. Payne started 23rd in that Hyde Tools car number 27. He's come up to 14th spot. He had a real good start here. Repeat. There we are up front. We see what we saw right there. Presley trying to get up on Mark Martin. And he caught that lap car right in the middle of the corner. And it cost him two or three positions. When a track is a little bit flat like this, when it's a good racetrack, boy, that inside lane makes a big difference. We're 20 laps into the Hardy's Frisco 200. Mark Martin leading Robert Presley, Joe Nemechek, Jeff Burton, and Rick Mann. We'll be right back. Back at Richmond, 24 laps complete. Bill Parsons has brought his car to Pit Road and working under the hood. Mark Martin continues to lead Robert Presley down into turn number one. They lap by Mike Wallace's car. And Ward Burton has gone a lap down, as has Shauna Robinson. Good battle here with Davey Allison. Bobby Dodder with that uh, DeWalt Tools car. Pivotal race for Dodder's team. That, that uh, company has to exercise their option on sponsorship for the balance of the season. So the Chicago driver zero-eight car trying to give the DeWalt folks a good ride. They've got a big crowd here on hand. They're watching the battle Davey Allison in the Mac Tools car, number 28. Butch Miller in 75. There's Todd Bodine right with him. The 34, Steve Grissom, and the yellow car top of the screen is Ricky Tim Fiedel. Good battle here. Back for 18th position. That's what's good about this first track. We talk about the inside lane being the preferred lane, but you still can race in that outside lane, but it takes a little give and take from the drivers. 
up off of that tight corner, you've got to give the guy a little bit of room. So this track is plenty suitable for side-by-side -side racing. We're seeing plenty of it. Six cars under a blanket here. Bodine had a look on the bottom heading off there toward turn number one. And Steve Grissom in the blue car started way back in 33rd, and he's come up. A few years ago, he was really on top of this thing. Won some races, and their team is really dedicated this year to try to get back in the win column, and Grissom's got the ability to do it. Running too wide like this, Neil, how much does that slow these guys down as Bodine and Butch Miller just brush together coming out of four there? It definitely slows them down because, like I said, there's a preferred line off of turn two. You've got to not get in the gas so quick. You know that guy's outside. You don't have as much racetrack to work with. So both of you give and take a little up off the corner. You get side by side, and it's just hard to get away. 